Hello. So you might be wondering why I've got a screenshot from No Man's Sky. And the simple answer is that I was playing through the game the other day when I came across uh, a terminal, such as the one um, pictured here, uh, and, and quite randomly in fact. And in order for me to extract a valuable piece of information from, from this terminal, I had to uh, basically decrypt uh, the so-called encryption pattern. Uh, and to that end, I was given a sequence of numbers. Um, if I get my pen tool out, sequence of numbers uh, that was uh, 1, 2, 6, 24, 120, and then an unknown sixth term. And the objective was to find the sixth term in this sequence, in this pattern of numbers. And um, looking at it, uh, right away, I, I, I thought, okay, it's um, they they offer a number of solutions. For example, 180, 620, and 720. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there are no, uh, many, 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 many legitimate possible answers to this pattern of numbers. Um, but uh, one of the uh, one of the what is very useful in situations like this is to often think about the numbers given in their context um, and by which, I, by which I mean essentially to employ Occam's razor that the, the most likely answer is going to be the one with the, with the least amount of assumptions and in, in, in that case um, this, the, the simple answer for me became quite obvious and, and outside of that I was only given three options anyway and it, it, it was very clear what option that would be now, before I get to that point and get to the answer, um, one may may have been inclined to say, okay, we've got uh, 1, 2, 6, 24, and a 120. And they may say, okay, we have one term, we have two terms, we have three terms, we have four terms, we have five terms, we have six terms. And the first term, the first term is 1, the second term is 2, the third term is 6, the fourth term is 24, the fifth term is 120, and the sixth term is unknown. And it's this unknown sixth term that one must find in order to extract this valuable piece of information. And one might say, hmm, okay, um, well, there's an interesting pattern here, possibly, in that uh, it seems that, for example, uh, the second term is 2, which looks to be uh, 2 times 1 and say okay and but it's it's clearly not uh, this 2 times 1 the value uh, what uh, the second term equals right because it wouldn't extend that logic wouldn't extend this way because there's uh, it wouldn't be uh, it will 2 2 times 1 but you know we're not going to get 6 by following that logic but if we multiply the term the number of terms by the number, by the, the the number of the term in the in the sequence, well, then suddenly one would strike an interesting pattern, right? Because two times one is two, and three times two is six, but then four times three is not twenty-four. And so, what it turns out to be really is that if 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 one were to immediately think of this pattern, you, it, they would not be far off, um, but in order to think about uh, the solution in this way, to find the answer this way, you would have to basically bracket and put aside the first term. You'd have to take this and put it to one side. And the reason for that, I will explain in a moment. But it turns out that indeed, uh, uh, what this turns out to be is that if you took, and my pen tool just uh, messed up for a moment, so just let me fix that. The, the second term equals two which certainly is 1 times 2, right? That equals 2. And the third term is 6, and you could think of it as 3 times 2 times 1, or yeah, 1 times 2 times 3, and you're going to get 6. And you're going to get 6. Likewise, uh, for this, the fourth term, well, if you just... Uh, if you if you if you just lay, uh, uh, multiplied it by the previous term, four times three, well that's just twelve. 
but if you multiplied it, uh, if you went 4 times 3 times 2, well, that's 24. I mean, you could multiply it by the 1 as well, but obviously that's not going to make much difference. And that actually turns out to be the case, where it's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, and that's going to equal 24. So it's a really interesting pattern here. And at this point, if, 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 if someone got so far as to figure all of this out, the fifth term would have be become obvious. They would, would have said, okay, well, it's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which does in, indeed equal 120. And then to find the value of the sixth term uh, in that sequence would have been fairly straightforward at this point because you would have, would have just continued with the same logic and you would have said 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 equals and it equals 720 and 720 so 720 is the missing value here um, the missing uh, 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 number in, in this sequence and the sixth term is 720 so they would say okay and they would input 720 into the terminal and they would uh, decrypt the so-called encryption pattern and extract the valuable information but in order to approach it this way as I mentioned at the outset the person would have had to would have basically f had to ignore this the first term because it, let's think about it if 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 uh, the second term equals two because it's two times one well that, okay that seems fairly straightforward if the third term is six because it's three times two times one okay again fairly straightforward if the fourth term is is twenty four because it's four times three times two times one okay I, you know and and likewise that that makes complete sense and likewise for the fifth term which would be five times four times three times two times one in the sixth term which would be six times five times four times three times two times one but working backwards something really curious uh, uh, happens uh, and let's just think about it if you take 720 um, I'll write it I'll write it over here uh, actually I'll write it I'll write it right here if you take 720 and you mult uh, and you divide it by six, you end up getting one twenty. And if you take one twenty and you divide it by five, well, you end up getting twenty four, which is interesting. And then if you take if you take uh, if you take um, if you take twenty four and you divide it by four, right, the number of term. Uh, the ter uh, in, in the sequence, in the, in the order of the terms, uh, you're going to end up with 6. And then if you take 6 and you divide it by 3, which is the number of terms, uh, you're going to end up with 2. And if you take 2 and you divide it by 2, you're going to end up with 1. And if you take 1 and you divide it by 1, you're going to end up with 1. And so what, what's curious, really, is that you have 720 and divide it by 6, you get 120. You, you, you then divide by 5 and you're going to get 24. You then divide by 4, you're going to get 6. You then divide by 3, you're going to get 2. And then you divide by 2 and you're going to get 1. And then by 1 and you're going to get 1. And, but if you, if you look at it more visually, something breaks down here. Because, okay, we're... If we think about it backwards, the sixth term is six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay. Likewise, or the second term is just that is that number of that term uh, uh, multiplied by the term preceding it, so two times one. But what is one? Well, one would, in in following that very same logic, one would have to be one times zero. But one times zero is clearly not one. One times zero is 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 of course zero. So something breaks down here, and so intuitively, one would have had to think, okay, I need to bracket, I need to put this to one side, because the logic works clearly from the second term onward to the sixth term, right? It, we've clearly worked it out, it makes perfect sense, but at the first term, it doesn't make any sense. And there's a reason why it breaks down, and, it, and, and this is really the focus of, of my video, um, and, and because I, I, it's, it's, it's a really quite a fascinating reason. Um, well, I mean, I think it's fascinating, at least I, I find it quite interesting, um, especially when I first learned it, uh, learned uh, um, why it breaks down here. Uh, and so when arriving to my answer, 
I arrived at 720 as well, and I thought about it in terms of the factorial function. Um, that's what immediately struck me and immediately stood out to me. And in, in, in the formula, the factorial function, if I scroll down and try to save some space here, the formula for the factorial function uh, states it is as follows. It's n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and then we can expand that all the way out to the to uh, to 1 okay and the formula basically states that uh, the factorial of any number is that number times the factorial of that number minus 1 and what's really really striking is that okay 6 factorial and this is how I arrived to my own conclusion, was 6 factorial equals 720. 5 factorial equals 120. 120, because all this is saying, this formula is really saying, is that uh, in the example of 6 factorial, 6 factorial equals uh, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. Whoops. That's all that it's really saying right here. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 5 times 6. Okay, so in thinking about this, that's what immediately struck me. 6 factorial which equals 725 factorial equals 124 factorial equals 24. 3 factorial equals 6. 2 factorial equals 2. And 1 factorial equals 1, just as we found. What, what about 0 factorial? Well, logic, one, I mean, one might say, it might be intuitive, I should say, or, 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 or to, to think, okay, maybe equals 1 or, zero, uh, or, or something, but, uh, or 0, I should say. But in fact, it, what it, it turns out is that 0 factorial equals 1. And so, in approaching it this way, this problem, this, this, this question of logic, this breakdown in logic, when you get to the first term and you're multiplying by zero and then that equals zero and you're like, well, what's going on? That doesn't make any sense. It's because zero factorial equals one. And the reason for that, and this is, I suppose, the, the, the end game, the, the concluding part of this video, the, the main focus, um, is, is, is really quite fascinating, you know, why zero factorial equals one. Um, when I first learned this, I, I, I just I thought it was quite beautiful, but um, uh, in, a, in a very mathematical sense. But if you have, uh, for example, n things, and you want to find the number of ways to permute them into k spaces, so if you have n things, and you want to find the number of ways to permute them into k spaces, the formula for this is n factorial over... Um, n minus k factorial. Okay, in 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 a sense, we're just thinking about combinations and 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 uh, and, and things like this. But uh, so equals n. But what? Uh, and then what we want to do from here is basically set k to equal n. So what if k equals n? I'm just going to scroll down to make some more space. What if k equals n? <coughs> so now. We want to find the n things, or n things, we have n things, and we want to find the number of ways to permute them uh, into n spaces, n spaces. And the formula for this, well, it turns out that this equals n factorial. And why does this equal n factorial, and why is this even important to this whole video? Well, let's write it this way. If we have one space times and then we have two spaces, and third space, and let's say a fourth space, whoops, getting ahead of myself, fourth space, and we ex expand that all the way over to n spaces, right? Well, the, 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 one could say the, uh, the n possibilities, the object in the first space, is going, that's going, it's going to be n, the number of possibilities, I should say, uh, in the first space is going to be n. The number of possibilities in the in the second space, and this is like multiple. This is we're multiplying here times. 
uh, the number of possibilities in the second space is going to be n minus 1. The number of possibilities in the third space is going to be n minus 2 because we're, we've already got n here so now we're just taking one away basically. I mean you could think of it that way. And the number of possibilities in the fourth space is going to be n minus 3 and you're going to expand that logic all the way outward until you get to 1 over n. Now what's really cool here is that that implies, this implies, uh, that uh, if we have n things and we want to find the number of ways to permute them into n spaces, um, what this equals is n factorial. And if we use this formula right here that was already laid out, well, what this leads us to is that this is going to equal n factorial over n minus n factorial, right? We're substituting k for n, n minus n factorial. Well, n minus n w is going to equal n factorial over 0 factorial. And, and for th that reason, we can say that 0 factorial equals 1. And so it's a, it's a really cool way to, to, to think about um, uh, to 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 think about this problem that just appeared in in the game it's it's quite a simple problem really uh, uh, and and uh, the 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 deeper intuition behind why it, it is 720 and if one had thought about it originally in the way that I, I, I laid out here they would have noticed a breakdown in the logic when you got to 1 times 0 and this is the reason why it works right here